Hello everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. So we are not going to be, so I prepared the recorded lectures just to be able to um, advance the class. So for today, for this um, file, what we're going to do is finish up on module 7, which is on BJTs. Last time, we already uh, discussed the three, three examples of um, analyzing BJT circuits. So for this um, material, I'm going to discuss the last problem or the last exercise. So for this exercise, uh, we are given a BJT circuit and we're asked to determine the range of resistor RB that will operate the transistor in saturation. So to tackle this problem, we will use the process, okay, the systematic process that was introduced previously in analyzing BJT circuits wherein we first assume that the BJT is forward active, is in the forward active mode of operation. So if this is our assumption, then that means that we will have a VBE voltage here that is equivalent to the turn on voltage of the BJT, which is 0.7 volts. And then we will be able to use the relationship between IB, IC and IE in terms of beta. So the first thing that we do here is we write the KVL equation at the base emitter loop. Okay, as annotated here. So for the base emitter loop, we start with the supply voltage 12 minus the voltage drop across RB, which is IBRB here, minus 0.7 minus the voltage drop across the 680 ohm resistor. So minus 680 times 101 times IB. From this equation, we could derive an expression for IB in terms of RB, which we can further simplify into this. Okay, so 11.3 divided by RB plus 68,680. After getting the KVL equation at the base emitter loop, we then proceed with getting the KVL equation at the collector emitter loop, which is this loop annotated here. So from this loop, we have 12 minus the voltage drop across the 2.7 kilo ohm resistor, which is written as 2,700 times beta times IB. And then the voltage drop VCE, which is minus VCE here. And then the voltage drop across the 680 ohm resistor, which is 680 times 101 times IB. From this equation, we could get an expression for VCE in terms of IB. And then if you recall, we already had an expression for IB in terms of RB. So we can substitute that in the equation here. We, we're, so IB here is replaced with 11.3 divided by RB plus 68,680. Now the question actually asks, the problem actually asks for us to determine the values of RB that will keep the transistor in saturation. So to do this, what we need is to check, okay, at what values of RB do we maintain VCE becoming less than VCE sat? So it's as simply okay, getting or substituting the expression for VCE that we got and making sure that that is less than 0.2. So we now have an inequality with only RB as our unknown. So from here, we could get this expression, which gives us um, essentially we just um, move 0.2 here to the left and then this whole expression to the right to get this. So 12 minus 0.2 will be 11.8. And then we could multiply that with the denominator here to get this. Okay, and then this expression is actually multiplying um, 338,680 with 11.3, which was the uh, numerator in the previous uh, slide. And then from here, we could divide both sides by 11.8. And then transpose 68,680 to the right, giving us this inequality. So therefore, RB must be less than 255.6 kilo ohms for the BJT to operate in saturation. Okay, so you could actually double check, right? So you could try to verify this. You could try like, say, uh, setting RB to 250 kilo ohms. 
and determining what VCE is your, you're gonna get. Or you could set RB to 200 kilo ohms and check that your VCE, when you compute it, should be less than 0.2 volts. So that's one way of verifying. Okay, so the previous circuits that we've discussed are actually circuits that are examples of the common emitter amplifier that we presented um, last meeting. So for the next few parts, okay, just to finish off with module 7, we will be introducing two other ways to configure the BJTS amplifier. So this is the common base amplifier. The second one is the common collector amplifier. Now, further analysis of these two amplifiers will be tackled in triple E131. But for now, what we want to see is we just want to uh, analyze this circuit and check how the BJT changes its operation as we change V in, as we vary the value of V in. So to be able to analyze this um, circuit, we first look at the case, okay, when um, when do we forward bias the base emitter junction here? At what value of V in? So to do that, for the base emitter junction to be forward biased, we actually want to check when VBE here becomes greater than or equal to 0.7 volts. Now, if you look at the circuit, VBE is actually zero ground minus V in, which, uh, so that's, that's why we have zero minus V in greater than or equal to 0.7 volts here. And then from here, we could write that as negative V in is greater than or equal to 0.7. And then if you multiply the whole inequality with negative one, we get V in is less than negative 0.7 volts. Now, when we say common base amplifier, I forgot to mention, that actually means that the input is at the emitter and the output is at the collector terminal, and then the base is common to the input and the output. Now, when we say common, it doesn't mean that the base has to be grounded. It just means that the base a terminal is connected to a certain DC voltage, okay? That, so that uh, when you look at V in, path to ground, it passes through the base, and then V out path, path to ground would actually pass through the base terminal. So even if you have a constant DC voltage source here, yung ground na dun pa rin sa baba nun. So yung path mo to ground would still be passing through the base terminal. So that's what the common base amp, uh, topology actually means. So input sa emitter, output sa collector, and then the base is common to the input and the output. Okay, now moving on, since we've already identified or determined that V in should be less than negative 0.7 volts for the BE's emitter junction to be forward biased, that means that when V in is greater than negative 0.7 volts, cut off yung BJT natin. So when it's in cut off mode, the currents are all equal to zero. So if the currents are zero, then there's going to be zero voltage drop across RL here. If there's zero voltage drop, then that means your V out would be pulled up to VCC. So that's why we have V out equal to VCC here. If we're going to plot that, so ignore the other parts of the plot here first, but note that, okay, if this is our negative 0.7, this point here, V in is negative 0.7. When V in is greater than negative 0.7, cut off yung BJT natin so that V out is just equal to VCC. In this case, VCC is 5 volts. Now, once we put our V in to be equal to negative 0.7 and then move to the left, okay, so less than negative 0.7, when, then the BJT goes into the forward, forward active mode of operation since initially your V out is VCC, right? And then you have a negative 0.7 V in here. So your VCE, which is equal to V out minus V in, right? Collector is V out, emitter is V in, would initially be VCC minus negative 0.7. So that's going to be a number that is greater than VCE sat. Meaning from cutoff, your BJT will actually go into forward active mode. In forward active mode, as you decrease V in, then your VBE here increases. As VBE here increases, the collector current increases. As the collector current increases, the voltage drop across RL increases. That means your V out 
goes down or decreases. So, pag pinlat natin, ibig sabihin, habang nag-decrease yung V-in, ina-expect natin mag-decrease din yung V-out. So, that we look at the plot, this is actually the part of the plot where BBJT is in forward active. Okay, as V-in decreases, papunta sa left yung V-in, yung V-out, nag-decrease din, pababa. Okay, now as you decrease V-in further, what happens is, diba, as you decrease, as you decrease V out, I mean further, what happens here, the VCE here actually decreases. Because if you look here, yung rate ng pagbaba ng V out mas mabilis kesa sa rate ng pag-decrease ng V in. Okay? So that means eventually your VCE will reach VCE sat, which puts the BJT in saturation. Once the BJT is in saturation, then your VCE, which is V out minus V in, becomes equal to VCE sat. Okay, then if we look at this equation, we could derive an expression for V out, which is V in plus V C E sat. That means magiging linear na ngayon yung relationship ng V out sa V in. And if we plot that, ito yun, yung part na yun, no? So, B J T is in saturation in this region here. So, what you see here is that, okay, the common base amplifier is actually a non-inverting amplifier because if you look at the region, forward active region, dito malaki yung gain, positive yung slope. Okay? Nung line na to, meaning the gain is positive. In contrast, just to recall, yung basic common emitter amplifier natin before, okay, the cut-off region is this region here. Ito yung forward active, dito siya may gain, and the slope of the curve here is negative. So ito, inverting na amplifier. Right? And then, ito yung saturation niya. Lastly, we have the common collector amplifier. So, common collector amplifier means that the input is at the base, the output is at the emitter, and then the collector is common. So, in this case, naka-VCC yung collector kasi in operating an NPN, the collector has to be at a higher uh, potential than the emitter. So, in this case, naka-VCC siya. So, we know that it's a common collector because yung collector, hindi siya nasa input or nasa output. So, yun yung definition essentially, no? So, um, if you have uh, input sa base, output sa emitter, then common collector yung configuration nun. Now, to analyze this, ganun ulit, no? So, we're, we'll first check that when V in is less than 0.7, the BJT is in cutoff mode. So, if it's in cutoff mode, currents are zero, so walang current dito sa RL, so your V out, which is the voltage drop across RL, would be equal to zero. So, if we're going to plot that, okay, when V in is less than 0.7, so it's to the left, your V out would be equal to zero. So, ito yung cut off yung BJT natin. You ignore the other parts of the circuit first. So, when we have already V in here that is equal to 0.7, um, since when the BT is in cutoff, your VCE, VCE would be equal to VCC minus, initially this is 0, so this would be initially VCC. So initially malaki yung VCE natin, so that means from cutoff, your BGT will go into forward active mode when V in starts uh, being greater than or equal to 0.7 volts. So in forward active mode, as V in increases, V B E increases, so therefore the collector current increases. When the collector current increases, I E also increases accordingly. So when I E increases, your V out increases, kasi lumalaki yung voltage drop across R L. Note that your V out here is V in minus the voltage drop V B E. So linear siya. Okay, nagbabago yung V out linearly with V in. So, if we're going to plot this, dapat yung V in, as V in increases, V out increases linearly with V in. So, ito yung plot natin. Forward active is this plot here, where V out increases linearly with V in. And then, as V out increases, eventually, okay, yung VCE mo dito, kasi yung VCC mo fix sa 5 volts, yung V out mo nag increase So, at some point, marireach mo na point to yung VCE sat dito. So, at that point, as you increase V in further, BJT goes into saturation, meaning VCE becomes equal to VCE sat, and therefore V out 
would be equal to VCC minus VCE sat. So if VCC is 5 volts, VCE sat is 0.2. That means V out would be clipped to 4.8 volts, which is this part here. Okay? So ito naman yung characteristics ng common collector. So yung forward active na region, if you notice from our equation, yung slope actually nito is 1. Right? As you increase V in by 1 volt, V out also increases by, increases by about 1 volt. Okay, that actually ends the discussion on module 7, which covers bipolar junction transistors. Uh, the next module is on metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors or MOSFETs. So I will also be um, recording a lecture for this module. So please keep posted for this. I hope everyone stays safe. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to use our forum in Uble or send me a private email if you're too shy to ask um, in Uble.